tonight I should meet with Ernest Hemingway himself, the famous author. He came to me in a dream and he said, Oliver, I'll meet you on Rue Veron in Montmartre because I want to explore the neighborhood. And I said, Ernest, what are you talking about? He said, it's a dream, Oliver. You don't ask the questions. I said, okay, okay. He was a bit, you'll, you'll, hopefully you'll meet him in a second and you'll see what I mean. But he said, uh, show me around Montmartre. There's a lot I want to see and I want to talk to you as a foreign journalist yourself. Now the ground rules are, I don't know what year it is and I'm going to find out very surreptitiously because I don't want to frighten him. And based on the last times that I've met this guy, he can't see anything from the modern world. So don't be surprised if uh, he almost gets hit by a car or something like that. Anything can happen. This is uh, midnight in Paris. So uh, while we're waiting for him to arrive and while we escape this scooter who's coming past, live video, anything can happen. I'm gonna just uh, show you where I am and uh, he should be here any minute. So I'm just gonna do a little 360 uh, right now. You can take a look at Montmartre behind me. Nice and uh, quiet for midnight, as I said, if you indeed want to believe that. Rue Veron, lots of nice restaurants around here. And he should really be here any minute. So uh, I'm with you guys now, looking for the writer himself and trying to figure out, uh, you know, what his story is. Whoa! It's a cold night to be far from home. Mr. Hemingway? Ernest, if you will. Ernest. Ernie. And you are? I'm Oliver. You're Oliver. I met you weeks ago, months so ago, I'm perhaps years. I'm push you off the street. What's in the street? Nothing is in the street. You stay with me. Ernest, whoa. I just want to walk with you as you uh, promised me. It's a pleasure to meet you again, Oliver. I'm happy to be here. Or I'm happy to be here. But either way, I am here and I must live with it. Okay. Uh, I want to know a few things before uh, we get walking. When we spoke, it felt like a dream. I'm not sure what happened, but you said that you wanted to explore Mama. What do you mean you're far from home? To be far from home is a feeling that every writer feels at every moment that he is not at his desk. And I am not at my desk and I am looking for my desk and I shall walk home one day and find it again. Great, that's exciting. Uh, maybe I can help you find your desk by showing you more marks. It's across the river down the way. Okay, we've already lost him, guys. But uh, maybe if we walk that way, Yes. Uh, and uh, I'll just sort of lead you along. Uh, don't mind me. I'll ask you a few questions, Ernest. Ernie, Ernest? Call me Ernest, call me Ernie, but by God, don't call me Ernesto. Ernesto? Or I have not earned that name yet. For a no. bullfighter I met once was named Ernesto, and he was more of a man than I could ever be. I, I feel that's something I want to talk about a bit later uh, in this uh, probably all too short walk, uh, Ernest, but I do have a few questions for you. Last time you and I met, if I remember correctly, uh, we, we walked around, I interviewed you. I'm a journalist too, as you well know, I think. I believe we were in my neighborhood where I first found love and found Paris and found my love for Paris. It was an old quartier where the Place Mange opens up for the Café des Artistes, but that was a different life and I am older now. That's what I was going to say. Since we've last spoke, you seem to be more somber, more serious. Your mustache seems to have grown a lot. I noticed the gray hairs on your head and in your mustache. Gray hairs? I white don't see hairs. any gray white, hairs. White sir. hairs, I would say. White hairs. I believe my hair is brown, as any good bull would have his hair be brown. That makes sense. Uh, you might notice that I'm more or less exactly the same, Ernest. You uh, look like a young man who is still waiting for his chance, and of course he will have his chance, but you must take your chance once you find it, for it does not come a second time. Ollie. Ollie? I've got, I've got a funny story for you, Ernest. Since we last talked, uh, a lot has happened with my writing as well, but we can get into that later. Uh, I know you're, you're a writer. Yes. What kind of writer? We what do you write? What do I write? Well, we can talk about that later. I don't want to foist anything upon you. Foist uh, it is a good verb. You should use it in your prose. It is a quiet night tonight, I must say. A quiet night? There are a few people out in the streets this evening. It is nice to be in the Montmartre, as the French would call it. Guys, I'm taking you away from Ernest for a second. Just a reminder. He doesn't see what I see. He, for him, there's no one on the street. There's no cars. He's probably, I don't know if he sees horses, but, uh, oh gosh. Okay, he's walked into a car. And he's coming oh. up the way. We're walking on a uh, Rue Peak. I'm gonna show you around because this is my neighborhood actually. The fishmongers are my friends. I've eaten many a shrimp down on the other side of the river. I do not know this fishmonger. Perhaps his name is Emile. 
What I thought, uh, we could turn the camera around and show, I'm gonna take you down uh, Rue des Abbes. I know you don't need me to spell it for you, but I feel in a weird way that people might appreciate this somehow. Are you in? People, which people? Yeah. Who, do, who speaks of people versus friends? Brothers and lovers and sisters and mothers. Good point, Ernest. And the occasional father, although fathers are distant because that is their role as a father. Well, I'll spell it for you then, Ernest. Rue, R-U-E, space, D-E-S, space, A-B-B-E-S-S-E-S. -S -S. You're eloquent in your speech and precise in your writing, and I respect you as a writer, although I do not know you, but you are authentic and honest, and that is what I look for in writers. Of course, I don't look for writers because I am a writer. How would you rate yourself as a writer? I am pathetic and weak, except for moments of genius, but those moments come rarely when the genius muses visit me. Wow. Is that one of yours, sentences? I do not own any sentences that don't belong to the muses themselves. Good point, good point. I'm just interested, before we talk a little bit more about those gray hairs that you're, that you're sporting since our last meeting, well, just tell me what you see right now. Explain what you see. I'm intrigued. I see a man floating above the ground. Perhaps I've had too much wine. What, are you drinking wine as we speak? I have wine in my hand, though to be drinking it would imply that I'm on a terrace with my friend Gertrude, or perhaps Sylvia, or more recently, James and Richard, who appear to be promising writers from our American compatriots. I'm going to need to stop you right there. When you say James, you're not talking about James Baldwin. Well, I call him Jimmy, for his name is Jimmy to his friends. And although I do not know him well, perhaps don't know him at all, I have heard great things, and he is young and promising. Gertrude Stein as well? Gertrude, she is a hard woman, and she is a good woman, but of course she has let me go from her inner circle, for I have displeased her. For my writing is more true and authentic than Gertrude's ever was or would be. Interesting. Um, and, and folks at home, I've just left Hemingway for a second. I'm going to try and figure out what year we're talking about here. Uh, I, I sense we're a lot later than the mid-1920s when I last talked to him. Uh, hang on, I'm going back to him. Uh, Ernest. That is I. In the years since we spoke, have you published a few, uh, a few more books since 1924, I think it was? I have published many books since 1924, and to ask me such a question would imply that they have not had the success that I warranted or wanted. But of course they have had success. But what is success? It is only the last book that counts for like a boxer, you fall and then you get up again. Well, you mustn't forget that I'm from the other side of the world. I'm from Australia and... Uh... You know. Australia is an island, and I have spent much time on an island named Cuba, and I'm working on a tale about a man in the sea, ah. although I'm not sure where it leads, for I do not feel him yet. I see. This, uh, <clears throat> this helps me more than, uh, than I think you will uh, know, Ernest, because... Uh, oh, we've lost him. This way. Yes, I uh, will follow you, Oliver. You know this neighborhood far better than I do, for I do not spend time up in the north of the city. I know, and uh, as I understand, it might sound like a silly question. When I say World War, what's the first number that pops into your head? 1944 was a hard year and a tough year, but I came with my compatriots and I made sure that we won. Interesting. So uh, that wasn't so long ago, was it? From my memory, it was two, three, perhaps even four years ago. Okay, guys, we're in the late 40s. We're in the late 40s. Let's talk about liberating the Ritz. Uh, Parisians are out and they are joyous, and I appreciate it. For like any other night in city, the city is alive. 1944, it was perhaps four years ago when I came to the beaches and the American army would not let me invade in the way that I intended to invade. Let's turn left. Let's turn left. Left, right, black, white. So four years ago, obviously, as we both know, we're walking in 1948 Paris. That's obvious. Well, of course we're walking in 1948 Paris. Where else would we be walking? I have many questions for you. You are a journalist and it is your duty and job and indeed passion to ask questions. Though I wonder, what questions do you ask yourself? The first is, uh, one thing that did make headlines in Australia is... Uh, Australia. Well, it's an island. You love islands. You I wish to write one day about it. went this. to Australia to search for the wildebeest. Oh no, okay, You've, that wine's hitting your head, uh, Ernest, but that's not the question I had. The question I had is it made uh, headlines in Australia that uh, 
Well, you claim to liberate the Ritz, but others said you had nothing to do with it. And you told me through the truth of that story. Well, the Ritz can never be liberated, for the Ritz can never be conquered. The Ritz has always stood the test of time and will stand the test of time still. But it would be proper and necessary to tell you the history, which is that I and I alone liberated that grand hotel early at the beginning of the end of the middle of the war. That's and a I sentence. found champagne That's a good one. and I found the soldiers and I intended to celebrate their work and my work and we drank until the night was over and then we drank some more. Where's the liberation? Liberation happened here in Paris in the summer of 44 although of course the Axis powers would stay here for another year and while in Japan there was another war that was fought with different men and different stories. I feel like you're dodging the question a little bit, Ernest. A little bit you're dodging the question. In the newspapers I read, uh, you claimed that you liberated the Ritz. You went in there guns a-blazing. I drove up in a Jeep, as so many other Americans have done, and at the Ritz I said that the bar must be open for our American soldiers, and I and I alone came to the Ritz and served them all champagne, and that is why the bar perhaps one day will be called after my name. That's not, that's ambitious. That's ambitious. Ambition is the only thing that is the worth of a man or a woman. I'm gonna pause you. Do you prefer walking uh, cobblestones or uh, staircases? I prefer a cobblestone staircase. <laughs> In that case, we will take the staircase and it will not be, hang on. I think we'll take the stairs. I shall take the stairs if you wish, Oliver, you are a journalist. So the stairs it is, uh, there's got to be, whoa. This reminds me of the stairwell next to the Place Mange, if I'm correct. Although perhaps it was a Place Contrescarp because I have had much wine in my days. And, and my memory and, and is starting today? to fail me. Today have you had much wine? Today is one of the many days. <laughs> if you walk on the right stair, Ernest, I'll walk on the left. There you go, look at that. Right, left, black, white. Tell me what you're working on at the moment. 1948, Paris. What's, uh, what's good? I have met an Italian countess, and she is a love and she is a beauty, and I would wish to be with her, but alas, love and life do not always intertwine. And so I have written a book where I travel over the river and through the woods. Whether or not it shall be a success or has been a success, I have not read the press so far for I do not care for critique. Why not? Critique is a disease and it is scum and toxic. And only love, as Rilke said, can hold art in the light. This, uh, the stairs made me a little out of breath. I must, I must be honest as we walk You're not a soldier like me. <laughs> Rue Dre Drevy with some, uh, with some modern street art. Did you see that? I see a street and a number and a name, and that is enough for me to concoct the story. Okay, continue on. Funny. Yeah, continue onwards. Number 18, I used to know a woman who lived there. What, here? Her name was Agnes. Oh yeah? And she used to serve croissant in the morning and sausage in the afternoon. I thought you didn't come to Montmartre so often. Well, I did not come to Montmartre very often. I do come enough to know the names and the faces of this beautiful, glorious Cartier. I just caught the first uh, glimpse of the Sacre Coeur. If we rewind just a few steps... Rewind is a word I've never heard nor intend to understand. If you look over the top of that uh, building, perhaps you can see the top of the Sacre Coeur. The Sacred Heart. My heart has always been sacred for a woman who I have not yet met. Or perhaps I met her long ago and her name was Hadley. Ah, uh, Hadley. But only the historians will know what my true feelings were for her. Ah, something to look forward to. To look forward, to look back, to live in the present. This is the challenge of all men and Sh women. <laughs> shall we continue? We shall continue. Onwards, onwards. onwards. What do you think of my, uh, you know, this uh, tour I'm taking you off? Your hand is in the air and you are seeming to be guiding a tool that I do not see. And for this I divine that you are crazy, or at least a writer, because all writers are crazy. And that is good and that is fine. I have two options for you again, Ernest. If we pause for a sec, would you prefer to go uh, directly straight left and to the Sacre Coeur, or through a cobbled winding street behind us? I am not exactly directly straight, although I would like to not talk about that in this time. <laughs> In other words, let's take the cobbled street behind us. Yes. Let's do it. 
Uh, and interestingly, you were talking about critique uh, before. As I mentioned, I'm a writer. You are a writer. You speak much of being a writer, but what do you write for? I do not know what writers do not write. Uh, it's funny that if I just go behind you here for a second. No, oh, whoa, uh, Ernest, bus, bus. The buses in the classic scarf were beautiful, but they were small, and I did not like riding them, for I prefer to take the city by my feet. Okay, I've, I figure this is more of a dangerous evening than I, than I could have ever possibly thought. And I'm too out of breath to take the stairs this way. Oh, he's still walking. I've lost him, guys. I better catch up to him. Look, bottle in hand. Goodness me, my plan is to show him my recent book, get a critique, although I fear he might be harsh on it. So uh, I'm gonna tread gingerly. Ernest. Hardly how I miss you. Ernest, who are you talking to? I'm not speaking to anyone that is of your business. Okay. Well, as I mentioned, I'm a, I'm a writer and I would like to uh, show you, what is he doing? He's going straight into the cart this way. This Some way. Some days when you walk in the city, it seems to block you without notice. Let's just see where he is. That is one of the charms of Paris. And you stop and you think and you wonder why. What are you doing? Why are you pushing me? Because something more important has come up for the moment. I'd be very interested to show you my latest book to see what you think of it. It would take me much time and coffee and alcohol in order to take the proper time to read your book. Just but the, I am happy to read it. Just the first paragraph. Any man who is worth his weight in salt or crackers or gold shall show me a one paragraph and that should be enough to be able to decide, although you probably are a writer of sorts, although you're not a writer in my stead until you understand what it means to share. Well, you haven't, <laughs> you haven't read it yet, so let's, uh, maybe under this street light, this Montmartre street light. Incidentally, incidentally. This beautiful empty street is perfect for a reading. You're a friend of Picasso. Picasso Pablo, I go by his name, and he goes by his name, <laughs> and we all go by our own name. Do you remember his address? Because I feel like it was here. I feel like it might have been here, it might have been there. Where are we and what is anywhere? This is Rue Gabrielle. There is a window open and there is a life there. Perhaps a woman and a man who love each other. Or a man and a man. Or two women and two Okay, men. Ernest, stop for a sec. I want you to read my book. I'm going to turn the camera... Uh, I'm going to turn myself around. <laughs> Thank you for stopping under the street light. I don't know if you, if you need the street light to, uh, to read, but I've got the book here in my bag. The writer's Ernest. eyes are strong and okay. he is able to read in all lightnesses and darknesses as well. Here's the book. Oliver G. Paris on Air, hang a on. memoir. Oh, just hang on a sec. This is the book, guys. If you want to check it out, let's see what is this. What? Nothing. Nothing. On air, you are holding a strange device. It looks like a microphone from the jazz clubs that I have seen Dizzy and perhaps Miles play in their later or earlier years. That's exactly what it is. I work as a journalist, as I... As I think I mentioned. On air, it is one of these terms that the new hip children have been using, although I'm not familiar. Do I start with the introduction for I must? I'd say so. Could you read it out loud? Introduction. The ring weighed heavy in my pocket as we stepped into the cold Paris night. And it wasn't heavy because it was big. It definitely wasn't big. It was more heavy in the sense that I felt a crushing pressure from my imminent proposal. We were leaving a left bank party. I understand where you were. <laughs> and we're set to walk to Hemingway's bar and there's a mistake here, sir. I have no bar in Paris and it is certainly not at the Ritz. I preempted after your My story plan was to stop on a bridge somewhere along the Seine River to ask her to marry me, then to continue to the hotel bar. I double checked the directions discreetly, a 20 minute walk fairly straightforward. But as we stepped out into the crisp evening air on the Rue de l'Odéon, that is where Sylvia, of course, perhaps still resides. A light rain began to fall. You can, you can stop. It's a good start and a great start perhaps, although I cannot define what a start is until I see the end. How about until you see the start? I dedicate Your the book to you. Your sentences are true and they have meaning because they are true. And I would like to read more. Perhaps you will let me. I would, well, funny that you say that. Let's keep walking. Read the uh, inscription on the inside. Inscription? Yes. To Ernest Hemingway, keep chasing the big fish from Oliver, there is a number here, Oct2020. Yeah. I am confused and befuddled by what you mean by this. I would like you to focus more on the big fish. The big fish is something that the man in Cuba has been chasing, the old man, for many years now. And perhaps one day I'll write a story about him. 
That's interesting. Okay. I have been chasing big fish for many years, perhaps my entire life, for that is part of the life of a writer, is to chase the fish that you can never catch. Well, that's why I dedicated the book, as such, to you. Do you have a fish that you chase? Is it small or is it big? Well, I, want it, well, I will do the interviewing at this point, uh, Ernest. I've got a question for you again. This uh, story about the big fish, the old man, do you have a title for it yet? It is not just the old man. He also is nearby the sea. Perhaps the old man nearby the sea. Or perhaps I should say a different word. Perhaps the grandfather lives next to the ocean. The grandfather's home next to the grandfather's ocean. That shall I be know, the title. I know, you were onto something before. Before the is near past. The sea. The future would, is all that matters. If I dare, you're onto something. Just as keep it simple. Keep it simple. Yes. The old man. Keep going. The old man's home. No, shorter. The sea. Yes. Now put it all together. The home in the sea. Now that is an interesting idea. You'll figure it out, but it needs some work. Uh, now I've got you to the top of the hill. Uh, I want to show you uh, what I think you'll really appreciate on this street. Behold, Montmartre. He's walked off again. I did my best. He's talking to himself. Hang on, he might walk into the old pole again. No, he's all right. Okay, so I tried to help him with the uh, the old man. So he didn't work. He's stubborn. He's obstinate. What have you got going on here? I'm looking at a menu for I would like to have a drink, although it is late and I believe that most of the bars in this neighborhood, unlike the neighborhood where I used to live, do not have drinks anymore at this time. Well, at midnight, Ernest, you, you're you gonna be lucky. Midnight in Paris is not a fact, it is an idea. I've got some, uh, you're right, actually, you're very right. As we walk along uh, Rue Norvin in Montmartre and approach the Sacre Coeur, I have some questions about you. I don't know if you remember, but about 20 years ago, France went through. 1928. <laughs> yeah, well, about 20 years ago, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, France, well, indeed, the world went through an epidemic. The an epidemic, I would call it a pandemic, perhaps, for it did affect the entire world, including me and my close ones. Right. Though I did not find anyone in my immediate family who was affected, for I was in Switzerland with Hadley, and that was a beautiful time when we were young and we were in love. And we were not in Paris, for in Paris in the winter is a dangerous place to be during a pandemic. You've gone a little off topic for a second. I want to just talk specifically about this uh, pandemic, not an epidemic, of course. Uh, and it might be weird to talk about it still 20 years on or more. But, the uh, influenza outbreak is that which you are speaking. Of course, yes. Uh, the Spanish flu. When it came, I was young and I was also a soldier and I did not see those facts until I was old. For I had been wounded. As a man, you are wounded in many ways, but I was wounded in a very specific way. And after in hospital, I found that the influenza was affecting the whole continent. So I can't, went to Switzerland. Well, I read a story, uh, F. Scott. Do you call him F. Scott? I don't call him by anything anymore, for he is deceased, and we do not speak of the dead in I, the same I, I way. meant, did you call him? It was a slip of the tongue. Mr. Scott, yes. to you. <laughs> did he, I, I read uh, some of his work that suggested you didn't care so much for the pandemic. You didn't wash your hands. You thought you were invincible to it. Every man is invincible until the day that he is not. Sure. Well, and so I was in Switzerland, for I was invincible. And there are other writers now, perhaps a writer named Jimmy, who also has found solace or will find solace in Switzerland. Baldwin? Jimmy is his name, and that is how I refer to sure, him. Sure, sure. What do you think about the, uh, the Eiffel Tower? The Eiffel Tower is a modernist masterpiece, for it shows the future and not the past. Although now it is past, for it is of another century. And what great monument shall be created in this here century? This is a question I, I could almost ask you. Uh, but I thought before we head to the Sacre-Cœur, you might, uh, say me you're so new to Montmartre, you might be interested, well, if I stop you there, in uh, seeing yes. the Eiffel Tower itself. Cold, hard steel. What do you think of it? My body was riddled with cold, hard steel when I was a boy. But now I am a man and I respect it for what it is, which is glorious and monumental. Steel and perhaps or the another Eiffel? adjective, although I am wary to use adjectives for they take away from the truth. Well said, Ernest. Shall we, shall we head on to the... Uh, to the sacre -cœur. Ernest is a good word. It is an adjective too. Perhaps I am Ernest. Well said, Oliver. Thank you. Have you had any more chance to think about the title of one of your new books? Or? 
There is a man in Cuba and he is old and he fishes and he is looking for a great fish and he is an old man who is looking at the sea. Yes, we're getting close. An old man. There are dogs barking. This is, a, this is just a neighborhood dog park. Nothing unusual about that. Exactly. There is no such thing as dog parks, sir. There are only dogs in our parks. And the dogs that walk in the parks are free to walk for Paris is a free city. Yes. Old man in the free city. <laughs> Maybe if we change tack ever so slightly. The uh, sea was a, the old. There was a sea where an old man began. The old man began. Yeah, no, I think we should skip that. I was wondering also how you'd describe Paris. We were young and we were beautiful and we were in love. What about the city itself? The city is majestic and it is forever enjoyable. And while the policeman may be about. It is nothing to be worried of. For there are people that like to obey the law and there are people that see the law as a means of obstruction. Did you have to wear masks during the pandemic? We did not have masks during the pandemic, but we had our own senses. Your own what? Senses. Oh, senses. And that is how we began and how we ended. Speaking of ending, uh, we've come to the Sacre Coeur, resplendent as ever. Uh, what are your impressions of it before we uh, before I let you head back to Montparnasse? It is majestic and there is a God, although what kind of God would impart this wisdom and this cruelty on this world, I am not sure. Very well said. Uh, I'm going to... Uh... It is incredible, isn't it? Beautiful view for a beautiful night. Would you consider that to be sort of a nightcap of a good war? No night shall be capped before the time is to cap, but it is a night to cap at this moment, and I shall say goodbye. You're going to have another drink, aren't you? Another drink or two, for I have seen old friends in the Cartier, and I perhaps will join them. Well, that's fair enough. I'm going to continue the walk myself. I appreciate uh, you giving me the opportunity to walk with you tonight, uh, Ernest. I appreciate you showing up once again in these streets to talk to me, Oliver. You are a writer and a good writer, and I believe in you. Thank you very much. I'm going to uh, put that on a cup. Oh, he's gone. He's gone already. Uh, that was quite a walk as we end up at the Sacre Coeur. Who would have thought Ernest Hemingway meeting me via a dream for the second time in several months? Uh, I just want to sort of end this by saying, uh, if you want to know the exact streets that we took, I'll make a, a really clear map of it. But uh, essentially, we walked from uh, Rue des Abbes along uh, up the stairs, Rue Norvain, which is a very popular street uh, in Montmartre for uh, tourists. And we ended up at the Sacre Coeur. In terms of Ernest Hemingway himself, uh, I think you all know what book he was trying. I tried to help him. I tried to help him with the title, but he wasn't quite feeling it. And uh, in terms of my own book, it's called Paris on Air. You've heard the first paragraph. If you want to check out more about it, uh, go to theearfultower.com slash memoir and you can read a whole lot more than the first chapter but it feels to me that it got a pretty good review from Ernest Hemingway himself so uh, I think you're onto something good now uh, the other thing I want to point out is if you enjoy talks about Paris like this one you probably like my podcast also called The Earful Tower and uh, there's something like two or three hundred episodes uh, with interesting character from uh, characters from Paris's past uh, and present and I think if you like Paris, then you'll enjoy it. As for me, I think we'll finish on a beautiful shot of uh, the Sacre Coeur and then a beautiful shot of the view that's in front of it. But I'll just leave you with this for now. And then I'll show you, uh, in fact, I think I've spied a friend. Hang on, bear with me. <laughs> Sam? Hey, Sam. Aldi! Hey, what's going on, brother? How you doing, man? I thought you I saw... You were talking to yourself for a while back there. You all right, man? I know confinement's going to be weird, but... Sam, it feels like I've... It feels like I've seen you so much and so little, all at the same time. Something's it's different. of the times, man. Something's definitely different. Uh, I was here for the last glass of wine before the, uh, before the city locks down. You know? It's weird to see you as a fellow writer in Paris because I've got a story for you. Oh, yeah? That is going to be. Let's hear about it, man. Have some wine. Let's uh, take a load off.
But uh, before we do have some wine and take a load off, you, my friend. Yes. San Lucas Barrantes. That's me. Samuel, even. Samuel, even, if you're a Spaniard of, 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 of the tribe that is from Madrid. No white hairs on you. No white hairs on me. I'm still young enough. Fresh face, clean shaven. Handsome guy. Hey, thank you. But slightly familiar. I can't put my finger on it, uh, but if you guys want to find out more about Sam, uh, Paris, and uh, everything in between, you can find him in all the links below. But uh, let's have a glass of wine, I'll tell you that story. Looking forward to it, Oliver. All right.